In this video, we're going to be talking about 10 electrical mistakes and how you can avoid them, and also show you how you can download a copy of this free ebook, which goes over the exact same uh, errors that we're going to be discussing here. We're going to start off with a uh, picture of a situation that happened where in some cases you're not going to be working in a project by yourself. There's going to be other contractors, general contractors, other people. And in this instance here, um, somebody ordered up cabinets and uh, failed to really take into consideration the positioning of the electrical outlets. And when the cabinets arrived, uh, they were actually covering up the electrical uh, boxes that were on the wall for the outlets. And so that had to be um, taken care of. But this is to explain that sometimes it's not an electrical mistake that's on a job at all. It's a job, it's a mistake that's including other contractors. So one of the biggest things is to communicate and work together on the job. Okay, let's get right into the mistakes. In this uh, photo, we see that we're inside of a uh, pump house for a well water, and there's a pump uh, that has been connected to a pressure switch. The power supply is coming in on a piece of seal tight flex, which is great, it's protected. But on the uh, wire going out to the pump itself, it's uh, first of all, it's open wiring and it's Romex wiring, a type NM wire, but there's not even a connector on the pressure switch. So this wire is vulnerable for damage and um, failure. So we definitely don't want to do that. Okay, the correction for this mistake as seen in this uh, another pump house is a pump that has been connected properly with flex that's protecting the wire. Uh, in this case, the pressure switch is mounted right onto the pump and that works just fine too. But the point is we want to protect the wiring. Okay, in this mistake, we see two uh, duplex receptacles that are mounted in a two gang box. So we've got a Romex or a Type NM wire that's coming in and one leaving. So you can tell that there's power coming in, power going out. And the problem is that the ground wires in this box have not been bonded together. Now when the ground wires have not been bonded together, obviously the, the path back to the main panel, the ground source, uh, is not complete. So the circuit wiring from that point on really doesn't have a ground wire connection. Even though the ground wire is there, the ground wire is not bonded and it is not correct connected all the way back to the main panel. Now another thing that we see here is there's a little bit of um, the jumper between the neutrals is not really appropriate. It's not the kind of a uh, jumper that I would do. I'd rather pigtail all the wires together back in the the box uh, have two pigtails going out, one to each uh, receptacle for doing this both for the hots and the neutrals and of course the ground wire. And here of course is the uh, correct way to bond your ground wires together. Um, in this case it's before all the other wiring is made up and that's usually the way I make up my wiring especially in a new or remodeled um, construction situation. But uh, you get all those ground wires in the back of the box. You put your crimp fitting on, twist the wire, and you've got your tails sticking out to be made up onto your switches or receptacles. Okay, now we're uh, looking at another box that's really a mess. Um, this has got a couple of different problems right off the bat. And um, we've got a box that's just simply overloaded with wires. The box is too small. I don't like the connections to the uh, the receptacle there, especially on the, the neutral side, and that is just not a good thing to do. Okay, the uh, solution, of course, is to have a uh, bigger box, a bigger electrical box, where your wires are have plenty of room, and um, you don't have a, a problem with space. Okay, now what we're looking at is a four gang box that has uh, four single pull switches. And um, you might be able to see this right off the bat. The grounds are actually uh, twisted together. There is no wire connector or no crimp fitting at all, but we don't have ground wires leading out to the switches at all. 
Okay, the solution, of course, is to uh, make up your tails, uh, bond all your ground wires together, but complete it with making uh, pigtails for the ground wires to come out and to be attached to your light switches. Okay, what we've got here is a mistake where there's a, uh, a splice or a connection that's made between two electrical wires. Um, and it is not protected in a box, and it's um, the wires are pretty darn short, so that's just not a good idea. The wires could come undone if anybody's up in the attic and they're walking around from uh, stud to stud or truss to truss. They could trip on that and knock that connection loose, and that's just not an, a good idea at all. Okay, the solution, of course, is to splice your wires in a junction box that's accessible if you have to make your wires longer so that you've got plenty of wire to make your uh, your splice and to make your connection. Okay, with this mistake, we're taking a look at a junction box uh, for a, a power cord and appliance cord to enter a dishwasher serve power to a dishwasher. The appliance cord does not come through the half inch uh, knockout that's been provided. And so the, uh, the connection is not legal, it's not proper, it's not, uh, it, it's not secure, and by golly, I don't even see a ground wire attached to this right now. Okay, the solution to that mistake is obviously bring your appliance cord in through the provided half inch knockout opening. Put a uh, an approved cord connector on it, and by all means, make up your ground wire to the green ground screw that will ground the equipment. Okay, with this mistake, we obviously are looking at a duplex receptacle, and it's uh, wired incorrectly. We have the black hot wire going to the neutral side of the receptacle. Uh, if this circuit was tested or this receptacle was tested with a plug-in circuit analyzer, you definitely would see reverse polarity. Um, this is not good. Uh, it could damage uh, some of the appliances that could be plugged into it. So we definitely want to avoid that problem. And so the solution to this is to bring the black wire onto the brass side of the duplex receptacle and attach it where the brass screws are. This way you'll have the uh, proper polarity and you won't have a problem with the receptacle. Okay, with this mistake, um, well, at least the guy tried to protect the wiring, but unfortunately um, used a plumbing fitting, which you cannot pull wires through. And the PVC conduit here is probably scheduled 20. It's really thin. It's typically for uh, data communications use but not approved for electrical wiring that's exposed above ground in this case. Okay, the solution, one of the solutions uh, showing here is where you can install a weatherproof box on the outside of the building and then go down and to your uh, underground conduit run with Schedule 40 PVC to protect the wiring. You've got a junction box there where you can make up your wires if you wanted to put an outdoor receptacle, GFCI. Uh, that could be done as well. Okay, with this mistake, it's unfortunately a common mistake for some people, and it's where you're using your wire strippers. You can actually use the wrong gauge on the wire stripper, and say, for example, you're stripping out the wire insulation for a 12-gauge wire, and you accidentally uh, clamp on with a 14-gauge. Well, what it does is it nicks the wire, and it causes a vulnerability that the wire could possibly break, if it's bent back and forth too much. So we want to avoid that. This is one of the reasons why you don't want to cut your wires too short in a, a junction box such as this. So if there is a problem, you can trim it back and you can re-strip uh, the wires, redo the uh, connection, whatever the case might be. Okay, the solution is to select the right gauge for the wire that you're working with on your wire stripper. Um, strip your wire back in a good distance there, I like to twist my wires together and trim off the end. This makes a really nice secure bundle of wire. They stay together. You don't have to worry about wires coming apart. And you can really get a good connection with your wire connector when you're um, twisting it on. 
Well, this is really an unfortunate uh, discovery, and I hope you agree that this is not the way to extend circuit wiring, especially on the outside of a house. Uh, somebody's removed the duplex receptacle that was there in the box and decided to just go ahead and um, continue on with the circuit wiring unprotected and on the surface. This is a violation, and it is not correct. So, of course, the solution is to reinstall the duplex receptacle and extend the wire to wherever you're going in the right manner and the, using the right methods that are uh, approved by the National Electrical Code and you're safe and good to go. Okay, great. Thank you very much for viewing this uh, episode of Electrical Mistakes. Um, be sure to get your own copy of this ebook. It's kind of like a companion for this particular video, and it's free and available on the website, or I will provide a link where you can go ahead and download it. Thanks very much. I appreciate your views.